Hey Snapchat, today I want to talk about how much information should you actually share with a VC. Let me start quickly with why you should never ask a VC to sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. VCs simply won't sign NDAs, and if you ask a VC to sign an NDA, it shows your naivete in dealing with the industry. But let me explain why they won't sign an NDA. As VCs, we're constantly pitched by entrepreneurs. We hear so many ideas. And here's the problem if you sign an NDA. If we signed NDAs with every company that pitched us, it's very clear that over time, as we fund companies, somebody else is going to say, you got that idea from me. And of course, it's highly unlikely to be true that we actually copied an entrepreneur, but a lot of ideas are similar when people pitch us. So it would just be placing too much risk on VCs whose job it is to constantly be pitched new ideas. The minute a VC gets a request for an NDA, they usually discount that entrepreneur and mentally just move on. Maybe it shouldn't be that way, but the truth is in a business where you're sent thousands and thousands of plans, you're really just looking for how to quickly get some out of your inbox. So when you go to VC a VC, how much should you share? The first thing I would tell you is very few companies have true breakthroughs on product, so your real likely competitive weapon is just execution. I only say that to make you a little bit less paranoid about sharing things. There are huge benefits to being open. You get a lot more input, a lot more people challenging your ideas, and it'll improve your ability to execute and operate. That said, in an initial VC meeting, the first time you're meeting them, you can tell them about your product, you can tell them about your concept, you can tell them about your progress to date. In the first meeting, you don't need to share every last detail about the company. Let me give you some examples of things I often have entrepreneurs leave out. If you have a product that relies on going market to market, I often won't tell VCs in my first pitch meeting where my next markets are gonna be. If you have some big technical breakthrough in your first meeting, you don't need to break down all the details of what your actual breakthrough is. I often tell people that you should be proud of what you've achieved to date and what you've built to date. Where you can hold back a little bit is what are your next three plans? The reason I try to keep it a little more high level in a first VC meeting, there are actually two reasons. Number one is your initial meeting with a VC is to try and build rapport and to prove that you're someone they should spend more time with. It's hard to do that when you get in the weeds on details, and so often even getting in the weeds isn't in your benefit. But number two is I do believe in protecting a certain amount of information. Here's why. Even VCs who are highly reputable, you can't unhear what you've already heard. So it doesn't mean I'm sending around your, your product pitch to other people, but once it's penetrated a VC's mind, it may even come out nine months or a year later in a meeting they have with one of their portfolio companies inadvertently. So assume what you tell a VC will start to become common knowledge. And here's the second reason. The truth is most VCs I work with are highly ethical but not every VC is, is super ethical. And one of the portfolio companies I backed, which is called Nanit, which produces a baby monitor, here's a story and a warning for you. They pitched a VC that pretended to have interest, and then we found out months later that they had funded our main competitor. What they did that was disingenuous is they kept trying to log into our system to access our data, even though they had already backed our competitor. When we saw their competitor launch, they had stolen a lot of our materials, a lot of our designs. It doesn't happen often, it does happen. I certainly will never work with this VC. I certainly will tell anyone who asks me privately, but it really doesn't happen that often. So here's the thing. I told Nanit not to worry because if it wasn't them stealing our idea, trust me, in the market, somebody else will. Here's how they will. There are thousands and thousands of aspiring entrepreneurs, talented people all over the United States, all over the world. And once you launch or once you announce your product, even if they're not stealing your stuff, they're like, wow, what a great idea. I think we can do it better. That's why I will continue to tell you that what matters more than anything is execution and knowing where the ball is going. When you send a deck out to a VC before seeing the VC, keep the deck you send a teaser deck. And I would send the teaser deck. I wouldn't put it behind a paywall behind a system. 
when you present in the VC meeting, you can present a more detailed version. That VC needs to lean in to earn the right for you to send the more detailed version to them.